Students will now take four courses a day. Periods will be 75 minutes long. There is only three to four minutes of travel time in between periods, so it is important that you move quickly from one class to another. Your lunch, which is either going to be in period three or period four, will also be 75 minutes long. We've returned back to our traditional Bishop Ryan Bell schedule with the day beginning at 8 a.m., so hopefully you're sitting comfortably in your class right now, and ending at 2.35 p.m., a little bit later than we have been ending. The Bell schedule is posted throughout the building and will be posted on the scrolling television announcements through the day. The semester will last for approximately 90 days until June, with a formal five-day exam period in late June. We have been given permission to use the cafeteria at 70% capacity for lunches moving forward. If you choose to use the cafeteria on your lunch, please try to sit with the same group day after day as they will be considered your close contacts. Cafeteria tables have been arranged in pods so that no more than six to eight students can sit together. When you're not eating in the cafeteria, please make sure that your mask is on. This will help protect you and others at our most vulnerable stage of the day. Please also remember that you are temporarily permitted to eat lunch in your classroom. Those of you on period three lunch are able to go to your period four classroom to eat. And those of you on period four lunch will be able to stay in your period three classroom to eat. So you've got two locations, Bishop Ryan, within the building to eat if you'd like to. We've also been given permission to use our common spaces a little bit more freely. Specifically, our form will be a common space that students may freely spend time in when they are not scheduled to be in a class. Students must be masked at all times in all common areas, particularly and in including the form. Hallways and stairwells continue to be travel zones only, and I ask that you don't hang out with friends in these areas other than to travel from one place to another and to eventually access your locker. Food should not be eaten in any of our common spaces, including the form, stairwells, and hallways. Speaking of lockers, we anticipate that we will be able to use student lockers beginning shortly, and of course you've started to hear about the plan to slowly transition all students back to grade lockers. Please understand that once we have officially returned the lockers, no school bags, coats, or other items that traditionally belong in a locker will be permitted in the classroom. In particular, non-uniform items should no longer be present in the classroom for any circumstances. Students who need to purchase a lock can do so at the attendance office on their lunch. More information about our transition back to lockers will be made available to you in the coming days. We've had to make a number of changes to student timetables, so I encourage you to continue to check my path for your updated semester two timetable. Timetable changes should be made through guidance by booking an appointment. Please listen up to future announcements about how to do this properly. Remember that you should attend all courses scheduled on your timetable until you have confirmation that you have received a timetable change that you are hoping for. Students that still have loaned school technology, such as laptops and iPads, must return those items to the library by tomorrow, which is Thursday, February the 3rd. We have been given the gift of a lot more freedom here, Bishop Ryan, and with that freedom comes a great responsibility to protect one another from the pandemic. Remember that regularly completing your daily COVID-19 self-screening assessment before coming to school continues to be a mandatory and an important way to protect our school from COVID-19 by determining if you should be attending school. Consistently wearing your mask, washing or sanitizing your hands, and staying safely physically distanced from others when possible is also essential. With that, I wish you a good start to this semester, Bishop Ryan, and now for more WRBR. Good morning, Bishop Ryan. Attention to all art club members. 
Just a quick reminder that due to the start of the new semester, there will be no art club meeting this week. Instead, we resume meetings on Thursday, February the 10th. Stay tuned for some fun activities and some great guest speakers lined up for this semester. See you all then. Hello again, Bishop Ryan. This is a quick reminder from your Bishop Ryan Drama Council to remind that they are holding a fundraiser to support the council and future productions. They're selling tickets and raffling off five baskets of some amazing prizes from places like Dairy Queen, Splitsville, and the Hamilton Bulldogs. Ticket prices are one for $5, three for $10, and at the best value, seven for $20. They'll be drawing the Wayne tickets on February 14th. Stay tuned for more information via their Instagram at BR Drama Council, and visit their TikTok for some fun behind the scenes videos at Bishop underscore Ryan Drama Council. Lastly, don't forget to follow at WRBR.news for all your Celtic stories. That's all for me. Stay tuned for some more great announcements. Good morning, BR. It's Timmy. And Ashra <laughs> here with some morning announcements. Yesterday, February 1st, marked the beginning of Black History Month. Black History Month is a month-long celebration of accomplishments by African Americans, Black Canadians, and individuals of African descent. It is also seen as a time to recognize and appreciate Black people's culture, activism, achievements, and global impact. It's safe to say that many of us lack a full knowledge on Black History Month, which is why throughout the month of February, we will be discussing, discussing historic Black figures as well as their impacts on Canadian society. It was through these figures and global movements like BLM that we can see the harsh realities of racial injustice on a global scale, allowing us to see the bigger picture behind these individuals and their stories. So we ask for your attention as we speak about our first historian, Viola Desmond. On July 6, 1914, Viola Irene Desmond was born. Viola would grow to be a businesswoman, civil rights activist, and an amazing role model for young black Canadian women. You might be familiar with her feature on the Canadian $10 bill. Viola built a career as a beautician and was a mentor who encouraged the growth of black women in their personal employment through her Desmond School of Beauty Culture. Living in the predominantly white province of Halifax, Viola did experience racial discrimination. In November of 1946, Viola went to see a movie at the Roseland Theater. There she requested a ticket for a seat on the main flood, but was instead stole one for a balcony seat in the area that was reserved for non-white individuals. After realizing the mistake, Viola attempted to buy a different ticket but was refused entrance to the main floor yet again. She tried to go in anyway but was confronted by a manager who threatened to kick her out if she refused to move. She did not and was forced out of her seat by the officer. Viola was taken to jail and trialed without any legal representation. At the time, the legal nature of racial discrimination in Canada had yet to be settled, so all arguments made by, Vi made by Viola were disregarded. She continued to fight her conviction, but was unable to do so and chose to dedicate her time and money fighting racial discrimination and segregation in Halifax. Viola died in 1965, but her legacy did not. Years after her death, Viola's story began to receive attention because of her sister, Wanda Robinson, who began to speak out on her sister's experiences and even authored a book about them. Viola finally received pardon in 2010 and a public apology by Halifax Premier Daryl Dexter recognizing her wrongful conviction and promising to prevent racial discrimination. Today, we can look up to Viola's strength and persistence by standing up and seeking justice for ourselves and others who have been wronged. We hope, Celtics, that you too will carry this strength and persistence throughout your day and throughout the whole month of Black History Month. That's all from us. Stay tuned for more WRBR. Good morning, everyone. I'm here to just to, here today to welcome you to the second semester and to uh, talk a bit about a community service volunteer opportunity. You would have received an email from me yesterday to talk about the coldest night of the year. The coldest night of the year is a, is a walk event very similar to Terry Fox that's happening on February 26 here in Hamilton Mountain. You have an opportunity to do it in person, walk either two kilometers or five kilometers, or to walk it virtually. There's that option when you register online. 
So when you do register online, you, you'll be able to make sure you connect yourself to the Bishop Ryan team. There's more information about this coldest night of the year walk and questions you may have on the bulletin board across the chaplain's, uh, across from the chapel. There's also more information also in the chaplain's office, which is just around the corner. We do have some great swag to win, as we can see in this lovely hat. All funds that are raised are going to the Neighbor to Neighbor, which is one of our local food banks here up in the Hamilton Mountain. So there's has to be one. The person who registered first as our part of our Bishop Ryan team is a winner. And the one who's gonna raise the most funds will also win a hat, and then we'll do a random pick. So today I'd like to announce our first winner, the first student who registered to be part of our Bishop Ryan Coldest Night of the Year 2022 is Nicholas Boca. Buca, uh, please come down to the chaplain's office today and to pick up your Coldest Night of the Year toque. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you for watching WRBR.